Welcome to the third lab for the technical capstone. This is modules four and five. So lab three, modules four and five. In this lab, we're going to be doing some port scanning, um, but a little bit more advanced than we've uh, done previously. So we've all used, we've used Nmap in Cyber One and we've used Nmap um, already in the technical capstone class. And in this uh, lab, we're gonna be adding some advanced techniques and integrating Nmap with some other tools that make the output just a little bit easier to work with. Um, and uh, I, it's it's gonna be really cool because uh, you're gonna learn a new new tool called Metasploit, which is uh, just a really fantastic um, uh, penetration testing tool. And uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, the first thing we need to do is uh, you know hop into the uh, the Ohio Cyber Range Institute's uh, virtual cyber range and make sure that your Kali Linux uh, machine is live and that your Metasploitable um, machine is live. And that's this uh, CLE Meta 005 machine. And so if you scroll down, you can see you know these are the two machines that uh, we're going to want on, uh, and you know everything else can be be off. And so when one of the cool things about uh, the cyber range um, is that, you know, these machines all together are essentially like their own network. Um, and so they're all networked. It's like a lot like in cyber one, when we scanned our home network and uh, you know, you were able to identify other machines. So these all, these machines are all exist on, on the same subnet. And so we can scan these machines, we can look at them, we can attack them. Um, it's, it's one of the things that makes the range really cool. Um, so anyway, launch it, go into uh, uh, Kali Linux and reminder, if you, you know, don't have it on, you're going to have to go through the process of, um, you know, uh, uh, powering that on, waiting for the gear to come back, you know, refreshing the browser, you know, it doesn't do that. Uh, it doesn't refresh on itself automatically. And then coming back in here and launching and connecting to the remote console. Um, and uh, when you do, eventually you're going to see a screen that looks like this. You're going to be logged into Kali Linux. And that way we can we can start the lab. And so uh, the first thing I want you to do in this lab is to look through all, you know, all the different applications installed on Kali Linux and, you know, let me know, you know, which ones you recognize. Uh, there should be, um, you know, plenty that you've used before. Just none of this should look uh, unfamiliar, but I want you to poke through it and kind of, you know, get familiarized with the different tools that are, that are on Kali Linux that are available for you to, to use safely um, on the cyber range. And so, you know, just take a you know, couple minutes and do that, you know, no more than 10. I don't need an exhaustive analysis. I just wanna make sure that you're, you know, familiar with the different tools that are available. Uh, and then I want us to get, you know, kind of back into Nmap. And so I know we use Nmap a lot in, uh, um, in, in Cyber One, and I promise you we use Nmap a lot as cybersecurity professionals. It's just a really great, simple, um, but extremely powerful network mapping tool. And so you're going to see it a lot, not just in this class, but when you get out into, um, uh, you know, the, your professional careers as, as cyber pros. And so um, I want you to just kind of refresh your memory on Nmap, um, you know, kind of think about, you know, how we use Nmap, you know, what, how it's used in the cyber community, how it's used in the IT community. Um, and then I want you to look up some of these, you know, different options just to familiarize yourself with the various different options that you can uh, use uh, with Nmap. And so I'm gonna let you know a little secret. Um, you know, I use Nmap a lot and I still have to Google um, how to do certain things on Nmap. Uh, and it's actually kind of sad, you know, I should have this memorized by now, I absolutely don't. Um, and, uh, you know, it's one of those like intro level interview questions and in a lot of cybersecurity interviews is, you know, to ask you what various different Nmap commands do. That's a fairly common one. And uh, I'm, I'm totally guilty of not usually not knowing the answer off the top of my head. So um, don't feel bad if for, you know, learning this stuff and then forgetting it instantly because I still have to look it all up. But I want you to go through that process. And, and again, a reminder, one of the things about the technical capstone that differentiates it from Cyber One is that, you know, we give you about 80% of what you need to, um, you know, do these labs in your own, but there is that little bit of independent research you have to do. And the reason I do it that way is I think there's a whole ton of value in building the confidence and understanding that, you know, you really can do this on your own. Um, that that's, uh, you know, really, really um, cool that you can go out and, and figure stuff out on its own. And I think there's that's a great educational experience, which is why, why you do that. And so you're going to be probably Googling the answers for all these questions, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I do want you to take a look at this. So the seven and eight ask you to update your Kali Linux system and so and, and to figure out what version you have installed. Now this is pretty usually pretty easy, right? It's uh, you know, there's some various commands. You can look them up online to how to um, you know figure out what version you have and then and then run the update. But um, the uh, 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 condition for this is that this version of Kali Linux is a little outdated, uh, and that's fine. You know, it's usually bad to run outdated software, but this is an isolated environment, um, and it, you know, it's just a test environment. But uh, it is actually not trivial to update um, uh, this Kali Linux instance. So if you're an experienced IT pro, uh, you know, it's 
you probably know the steps, um, but uh, your attempts to update this are gonna throw quite a few errors. And so I'm not gonna make you update it. So you can ignore that command unless you wanna tackle it. And you know, massive kudos and you know, bonus points equal to one entire lab if you can get the, your Kali Linux instance update because it is it is not trivial. There are a lot of steps, there are a lot of error messages you have to sort out as you update it. So it is possible, you know, I went ahead and did it, um, but I'm not gonna make you, I'm not gonna make you do it because again, this is, uh, you know, not an advanced class and it's kind of advanced stuff that it would take to make this update. But again, if you wanna try it, be my guest and go for it. Um, all right, and so then the second part of this lab is starting the Metasploit framework. And so we're gonna need an external resource to kind of walk through this. And so if you click this link here, um, this is, uh, by Offensive Security, so it's the same group that maintains uh, Kali Linux. Um, they have a wonderful training program built around Metasploit, um, and uh, you have so have this this free resource here, um, which is a whole um, essentially a textbook on uh, how to use Metasploit. Really easy to read. Um, yes, it's technical, but it's not intimidating. Um, it's perfectly you know suitable for for the audience and your level of expertise in this class. And so. Um, the, that, that link uh, will open this section, which is a, the database section of this specific textbook. And there's some steps we have to do um, to get ready to do this lab. And so I'm just gonna help you walk through these just cause you know, um, there are some intricacies. And if um, you have any errors, sometimes these steps don't always work. And so if you have errors, you know, I'd, I'd love it if you go figure it out on your own. There's a couple errors I've encountered that were perfectly Googleable that uh, you, know, you could sort out on your own. But if you do have any errors, please feel free to reach out to me and I will um, walk you through the process of getting around those. Um, but it should work for you. I'd say 90% of the time it, it works just fine. And so um, the first thing we need to do, open up terminal uh, and um, you know, run this, uh, you know, this command here. So we're just gonna go stim ctl start postgres. Let me see if I can spell postgres. SQL. All right. So uh, again, just like we were, when we learned in Cyber One, when we were just getting used to command line, um, a lot of times there's no necessarily indication that the command worked. It just pops up your command prompt again, and that's how you know that everything worked the way you want it to. Uh, and then just type in the next uh, next command here. Um, and this database has already started because you know I you know, have already gone through this lab. Um, but uh, you know you might get a slightly different. Um, prompt that comes up uh, talking about your database. Um, but the point is that we're, we're initiating the database for um, uh, for the Metasploit framework, uh, which is gonna enable us to do the rest of this lab. And so to launch Metasploit, it's a, it's a really easy command. It's msf console, and this will bring up Metasploit. And now Metasploit, um, you can run pretty much any command you can run in Linux, you can, you can run while you're in um, uh, you know, the msf console. Uh, and but we're just gonna be doing a few so you know you can run nmap you can run various different scans uh, you can run it just like this was your normal command prompt um, but we're gonna be doing a, a couple different we're gonna be doing some specific things within Metasploit so um, the first thing we can do is to uh, this first instruction here is to just verify that the, the database is set up correctly so that's just DB status database status right and you'll see it's connected uh, the connection type is listed um, and so everything should work right. Again, 90% of the time it does. Sometimes there's there's intricacies, but uh, you know this should this should work just fine. And so um, after once you've validated that your database is set up, uh, I want you to just take a look at the workspaces that are available. And so work um, spaces are a lot like when we used Recon NG in uh, Cyber One. You know we set up a specific workspace for the the test we were going to run. This is kind of the same the same thing. And I ran that command wrong. Put on a extra S, all right, and so you can see I have lab, lab two in the default workspace. And uh, it's, it's highlighted red because right now I'm actually in the, the default workspace. Um, and so to create a new workspace, uh, it's actually really easy. Um, we just need to uh, use the uh, A or the D command followed by the name. So I wanna create a new, let's say I wanna create a lab three workspace. It's just workspace A lab three. And then to validate that it's there, you can just run the workspace command again, and you can see um, I have my my lab three workspace. And because I just added that, I'm I'm now um, in that that workspace. Um, but uh, you know, if you wanted to select that workspace, um, if you wanted to be on that uh, that um, that actual workspace, the switch to switch to that workspace, you can see that that command is right here, um, which you can always get to by saying workspace h you can pop up and you can see how you actually do what other commands work within workspace. And so in this case, you know, we just want to make sure that I'm in lab three. So workspace 
lab three. All right, so now I can validate and be sure that uh, you know I am in the lab three workspace. So um, from here, now that everything's set up, your workspace is created, you know your database is connected. Um, you can go through these steps on the on the actual lab assignment, and so. Um, you know, you can find the IP and subnet address, subnet mask of your Kali Linux system. It's going to be, uh, if you remember in Cyber One, we did that when you discovered um, the network address and the IP address for your home computer inside your home network. So it's the exact same, exact same idea, exact same concept. Um, and uh, you know, you may have to do again a little bit of googling to remind yourself of some of these definitions um, and uh, to remind yourself how to actually run those commands. But they are, they're pretty easy, and I know you can figure it out. Um, and then uh, I want you to kind of go over here and just see what hosts are listed in your database and send me a screenshot. Um, you know, the answer is going to be none, right? You haven't run any scans yet. So it's perfectly normal that this comes up blank, but I still want you to go ahead and run that, that command. Um, same with services. Um, you're not going to have any because we haven't run any, any scans yet, but just go ahead and you know, run that and make sure that those those are empty. And so, um, from here, uh, you're going to be start running scans. And again, I'm I'm really confident that you know, based on your existing experience with Nmap combined with your you know, ACE technical capstone level Google skills, um, you can remind yourself how to run these specific scans. And so, I want you to do a ping sweep of your network. And so, in this part of here, we're going to figure out how to do you know what your network on the Ohio Cyber Range is, just like we did with your home network. Um, and then you're going to aim your scans at that network. Um, and uh, you know, as you run these scans, uh, the key, instead of using nmap, you're actually going to use the command db nmap. And so we're going to be over here in the range, db underscore nmap. And what this is going to do is it's going to take your nmap scans and it's going to pop, it's going to populate the database that you've connected for um, Metasploit. And so instead of just getting that, you know, output of that nmap output, that's, you know, kind of difficult to work with, it's going to automatically populate this database so that when you run the host command and you run the services command, you're going to see stuff pop up. Um, and it's just kind of, a, it's just a slick, easy way to actually work with nmap results because it's nice and organized and Metasploit does that, um, that for you. And so when you run that db nmap command again, these are going to populate and you're going to learn an awful lot um, about what your your system does. And so then the next step, after you run Nmap, I want you to use another tool. Um, but I want you to pick one of Metasploit's built-in scanning tools. And it can be any tool that you want. Um, and so the key to do this is to kind of head back over to the, the textbook. And we're going to want the information gathering chapter. And so if you see the information gathering, they have um, a lot of different tools, you know, areas, tool areas for Metasploit since we're, you know, still in port scanning. Um, you can see this section here. And this section of this of the textbook will teach you how to identify and load um, these Metasploit specific tools. And all I want you to do is pick one. Um, it can be anything. I encourage you to read this page and kind of pick one based on what you think is going to be um, the best uh, the best option. You know, you're going to load the tool and then you're going to have to do some stuff extra after you've loaded the tool. So you're going to have to, um, there's a couple other commands you're going to have to do to configure that tool. So it's a really common security step. Everything you need um, to do so is, is on this page. So read it carefully. Don't just, you know, uh, you know, skim through it really quickly because uh, you are going to have to configure the scan to get it to work right. And if you don't, you're going to kind of be frustrated. Um, but yeah, go ahead, pick your tool, load it, configure it, run it, and then, you know, answer the, the questions there. Um, and that will be the module four or five um, lab, lab, uh, lab three for this class. And um, again, uh, you, you have you know, 80% of what you need just, just in your head are already from Cyber One or from the existing re, um, resources for the class and, uh, and the lectures. Um, to, to get through this lab, there is going to be a little bit of independent research. Um, the vast majority of what you need is going to be in the um, Offensive Securities Metasploit textbook, which is just a, a wonderful resource for learning Metasploit. Um, but, uh, you know, do read things carefully. It's, you know, it's, it's running commands, one letter off, one character off. It won't work. You'll get frustrated. So, you know, read it carefully. Um, you know, follow the instructions perfectly and you're going you're gonna to be just fine. Um, unless, you know, obviously, if you want to take on the advanced task of 
getting your Kyle Linux system updated. Uh, it's uh, I, I really actually encourage you to try. Like it was it was fun. Um, I, I admit I had to Google some stuff myself to figure out how to get through some of the different dependencies that have to be upgraded. Um, and it's uh, it's not a quick process, um, but it was a very value worthwhile challenge. And again, uh, you know, extra credit, you know, to the, the a full labs worth of extra credit if you can you can get that done. And, uh, and show me that you were able to update uh, upgrade successfully. So, uh, thanks again. You know, have fun. Uh, this is this is a cool lab. And of course, you know, please text me, reach out to me if you have any questions or if you're hitting any roadblocks. Have a great time. This tutorial was prepared by the Center for Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection at Cleveland Marshall College of Law, Cleveland State University.